Hi there, I am Tanya Rindiger and I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder myself and people often ask me, you know, are you on medication? What medication helped you? Should I be on? Should I change? You know, should I taper off? Should I increase the dose and so forth? So this video might help you there a little bit, but I want to first off tell you that while I do have um, university degrees in biomedical science, so I'm a researcher in, in the medical field, I'm doing a PhD at the moment in the field of immunology, but I am not a doctor, I am not a psychiatrist or a pharmacologist. Okay. Well, I did pharmacology as part of my unit degree, which uh, made it actually really difficult because then I went, every time I saw a doctor, I asked lots of questions. <laughs> and I don't know if you had that experience too, but some doctors really don't like it when you ask lots of questions. <laughs> so, but I was quite lucky in the end, I did find a doctor that um, was quite happy to do to have a little bit of a discussion and, and give me a little bit more detail to, to, to help me there as well. So I just really wanted to, you to know that first off too. But when we're talking about medication, I like to include the, as when you ask the Mariana, the pot or the CBD oil as well, because at the end of the day, it's, um, while it's not produced as medicine just yet, I think, in that, or it's, there's still many countries where it's not uh, legally available. So, because it does affect your body and it's just like any other pharmaceutical out there and it has side effects for some people. Okay, so that, that's very um, key there. But what we do when we're working in the lab, like when I worked in the lab still, we, for example, we worked on a, a pawpaw, we tried to extract a compound from the pawpaw that um, aids wound healing. So that's what happened in the lab, okay? You get this compound, you want to have the purest form of this, and then you can convert it either into ointments, oil, tablets, and so forth. And that helps us to really be able to dose it so we have this um, that steady state, okay? We don't want, to want it to fluctuate, so we can do that with, with those um, knowing the exact amount of the active ingredient that's in the tablet, okay? So that's very important. So, now listen to all the pot smokers. <laughs> when you're smoking, you never know how much of the active ingredient you get. Okay? And if you have complex PTSD, our emotions are a bit like this anyway. This is this roller coaster. And smoking pot can make that even worse or not. Doesn't improve it that much, let's put it that way. <laughs> so, but that, that plant actually has a, a lot of active ingredients in there, others as well. Okay, so, and it should go without saying, but I'll put it out there as well. It doesn't matter how natural that pot is, organic or not, it's always going to damage your lungs. Okay, so smoking pot should never be your option. If that's, if you, if that's Mariana, if that's what you want to take, then maybe choose the CBD oils and things like that. I think in more and more countries, it slowly becomes legally available. It's, I think it's still really difficult to get in Australia. I don't know about other parts of the world, but it's still really hard. So we've still got a bit to go there, but it's really exciting because this might be one of the first compounds that actually is a bit more specific for PTSD. You know, they're, they're, they're hoping that it might reduce the flashbacks or help people sleep better, have less nightmares, and that's really, really exciting news because up to now there's no specific medication for PTSD. You know, I mean, there's all your uh, antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication out there. But after that, when you're looking at Seroquel, a lot of people are on Seroquel, but they're more antipsychotic um, medication, your Lyrica and so forth. So they're not specific to PTSD. Okay? So, but from, from a research point of view, we have, you know, we're just really, really good at treating acute diseases, you know, even if they're really intense. If something's acute, we can really treat that and, and, and resolve that. What we're still not good at at all is treating chronic diseases, any chronic back pain, inflammations and so forth. You know, there's so many chronic diseases, including mental health disorders, you know, your PTSD, it's a chronic ongoing thing. 
And that's when that's where we're really struggling because even knowing we have a medication with the purest um, compound in there, anything that you're taking in, our body it's it's so complex. You know, nothing works in isolation. If you change something in in the up there in your brain, it'll affect something else in in your body as well. And that's really really important to keep in mind because if you're taking things ongoing, side effects may become really intolerable for you or you know may, may really affect your quality of life okay that's what it um, did for me and I don't know uh, what you where you were at there but um, I went full circle really because initially I just refused to take medication I was so scared it was really triggering for me I was so scared of being drugged and so forth so it took me a while till I were really hit crisis, like I was really suicidal and I had a really dark time in my life and then I went on medication and then I thought I can't survive without medication, <laughs> okay, so I really flipped and I thought oh, I'm going to be dependent on medication for the rest of my life and I was really upset about the whole thing and you know, it took me a while to kind of accept that that's there to help me and so forth. But now, it's like 15 years later, I'm actually, at, at this point in my life, I'm totally off all medications, so I'm medication free, and I, I never thought that was possible to, to do that, you know, and to feel happy and being able to manage my anxiety and have some form of inner peace, you know. So I did, it, it does work. So I'm not for or against medication, but I think medication has its, its place, like while, while I was in acute crisis, so to speak, I don't think I would have made it without medication. Okay, so that was really, really important there. But then I stayed on the medication for too long, and I started to have some really bad irritable bowel syndrome, for example. In the end, I think there was only about five foods that I could eat that didn't cause my gut to plode or give me diarrhea or constipation or you know make me feel really uncomfortable and sick. So it really started to affect my health. And and I didn't realize that this was my medication I was taking for my PTSD till I tapered off last year. So all my irritable bowel has gone now because that was just part of the side effect of that medication. So you really want to um, keep, keep that in mind. But the reason I didn't want to get off the medication or was so hesitant is because there was still something that I thought I, it didn't feel right. You know, I still didn't feel like... I, I am worthy. I still had this big, hollow, empty feeling inside of me. You know, that one that it's really hard to describe. It's just so heavy and painful and dark. And I still had that there and I couldn't get rid of it. And it was an awakening, not a good one. <laughs> when I realized that no medication out there is ever going to fix that problem. So it was an awakening and then it was a breakdown. <laughs> So, it, um, but once I realized that this is a mindset shift at the end of the day, I can choose to keep thinking I'm not worthy or I can start giving myself permission to think I am worthy just as I am. I am enough just as I am with my quirks, with my flashbacks and nightmares and all the rest of it. You know, I am enough just as I am. Okay? And once I've made that mindset shift, that's when everything in my life changed, everything. Like I said, I never thought I could have inner peace or joy and, and things like that in my life, but it was possible. So that's just my experience of medication and a few things you might want to think about when you're choosing on whether you should be on it or shouldn't be on it. And I just only can highly encourage you, if you're choosing to be on medication, please see a specialist, you know. Like if you have something wrong with your heart, you don't want your GP to prescribe you medication. You want to go and see the specialist. You want to get the medication prescribed by your cardiologist. And the same with mental health disorders. If you want to go on to medication, I think it's best to first see a psychiatrist. And then the repeats, yes, you can get that from a general um, practitioner. But initially, I think it's really important that we do see a psychiatrist there. So, that was a lot, <laughs> but as always, I'm always looking forward to hearing your opinion on that too, and you know, please ask questions or give me feedback, as always, I love hearing from you guys. And in the meantime, lots of love and rainbows um, to brighten up the tough times just a little.